Well, hello boys and girls, and welcome to another Alabama adventure. Today we go back down to Chambers County. I've got something down there I want to show you. You may know about it, you may have seen it, you may have heard about it. But anyway, for those of you who hadn't or who want to see it again, I'm going to carry you down to a uh, statue that's on the uh, courthouse lawn or sidewalk or whatever you want to call it. You can see it when we get down there. I've been down there this morning, did a little field trip for you to give you a little background on what we're going to be talking about. Uh, it's uh, February the 20th, uh, 2018. Today it uh, drizzled rain all day. It has been foggy. The fog has been thick. This is one of the thickest fogs I believe I've seen, and I don't know when. It was so thick out there that you could about cut it with a knife. It was like potato soup is about what it was trying to drive out there in, in this mess today and get around. I had to go down to uh, uh, Lynette, Alabama earlier today, and after I got down there, I thought, well, you know, when you come back through Lafette, why don't you just stop and... Uh, do a little video on this uh, a statue they have down there. And I know I said Lafette. We, we don't say it uh, like a lot of people say it here in Alabama. Lafayette uh, is the correct pronunciation on it, I believe, like Lafayette, Louisiana, and some other places like that. But uh, here in Alabama, we leave out as many syllables as possible to get the same message across. It just uh, Cuts down a lot of wear and tear on your teeth and your mouth and your jaw muscles. That's, that's why we leave out a lot of syllables around here. And, as the road warriors used to say, if you don't like it, we don't care. So anyway, hope you care about this video and hope you have a good time. Let me tell you who we're going to see. Many years ago, there was a man born in Chambers County. He got credited later on for being born in uh, Detroit. But he actually was born in Chambers County. He was probably the greatest boxer of all time. He held the uh, heavyweight uh, championship longer than any other person has held it in history. And I'll tell you in a few minutes when I get over to Wikipedia so I can tell you a little bit about him. Joe Lewis, the Brown Bomber. That was what he was called back then. And uh, anyway, I want to carry you down to Lafette uh, Courthouse Square. And we'll get this video started. But let me warn you, after I got down there, uh, I got sidetracked right off the uh, uh, top of the video down there because there was a uh, movie made that you have probably watched in Lafayette and you're going to be uh, familiar with it. And I'll tell you what that movie was in just a few minutes. And now from the tail end of the Appalachian mountain chain in the heart of the South, this is Alabama Adventures. Okay, now as you come into Lafette, one of your first stops is going to, be what it is going to want to be right here at the ABC store. All your drinking needs in Lafette. You can pick up everything you need right there. All right, it's going to be loud down here today while I'm uh, trying to show you this. What I'm going to show you, this is the uh, Chambers County Courthouse. And if that whole courthouse looks familiar, you've seen it in a movie. I'm going to let you think about it a minute, and then I'll come back and tell you what movie that... Uh, the Chambers County, Alabama courthouse was in. Let me give you a little quick shot of the town. A lot of traffic down here today, as always. It's a foggy day, kind of a rough weather day. But this is uh, Main Street. I guess it's Main Street uh, in uh, Lafayette. Anyway, you see some old uh, buildings here. This particular building right here used to be a hospital. And uh, anyway, I don't up through there is the rest of uh, what you can see of the town. and. Uh, let me get turned back around. And what we're going to be looking at is this uh, uh, statue right over here. Does this particular person look uh, familiar? This is a uh, uh, Joe Lewis. His real name was Joe Lewis Barra. He was uh, born in uh, Chambers County, just right up the road here, I think about eight or 10 miles. And uh, that's what we wanted to show you today was uh, this uh, statue monument they've got to uh, one of the greatest fighters of all times, uh, Joe Lewis, and he was from Alabama. Chambers County, uh, Lafayette, Chambers County, Alabama. Okay, so let me cut in right here and I'll tell you the name of the movie. The movie was Mississippi Burning. And I'm uh, sure you've seen that. I'm just uh, 
glad that when they wrote the movie and uh, the producers and directors and that kind of stuff didn't want to call it Alabama Burning. We get enough bad publicity, publicity like it is down here without somebody making a movie. But anyway, uh, Gene Hackman starred in that movie, and uh, that's what I want to tell you what the movie was real quick. And what I'm going to do is uh, take you on a little tour of the town. Not a big tour, but just a little quick tour showing you some of the locations where they did some filming and that type of stuff. There was a lot of people around here that played extras in the movie, and uh, one of them was a real good friend of mine. His name was Esalen Earl. And uh, at one point in the movie, when the FBI and uh, somebody's coming out of the side door of the courthouse over there, he had a real close-up of uh, uh, Mr. Earl, my uh, friend that I uh, knew real well, worked with some many years ago. And uh, anyway, I got a couple of little stories I want to tell you about whenever we make our little tour of the town of uh, Lafitte when it starred in Mississippi Burning. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it real well, probably it's fog down here today, but that dome building right there in the movie Mississippi Burning, that was uh, the FBI headquarters, and they did do some filming on the inside of that building also. This is the courthouse where uh, the trial took place in that movie, and I have been in the uh, courtroom up there with all that oak uh, woodwork that's in that particular room. I'll try to get that on a video later. Right over here, that building right there on the end, uh, I believe it's uh, Newman Farm Supply, was the uh, uh, feed store that was in uh, Mississippi Burning. Now, I just want to give you a little quick sweep of this side of town right down through here, and of course, I want to get some cars coming by and uh, let them get on uh, YouTube today. Glad, glad y'all decided to get on. Anyway, what I wanted to show you was one of these three buildings right through here was uh, used as the uh, a beauty shop in uh, Mississippi Burning. And okay, we're gonna go right back up there in town and I'm gonna take you around the curb. If you remember in the movie, there was one uh, place in there where they came around uh, town in uh, this car and they threw this black guy out in the street I'm going to take you down that very same little road right now and show you where it happened. Okay, right now at least the light's green, but everybody's coming our way. But anyway, this is where they came around the curve. And whenever they straightened up or in the curve, they threw the guy out and it was right there. So now you can say you have rode the same road that was in a movie one time. So anyway, now we're going to uh, make a little right turn here and get back on 431 and... Uh, Head on out of town. All righty, I know we're getting a little sidetracked, but I'm going to go on and tell you a couple of little stories that I was told that happened down there whenever the, a movie was being filmed and everything. One thing was out on Highway 50. As you come into town, they had uh, were going to do some filming out there, and they had uh, put up a sign that said Mississippi State Line. And uh, one day while before they got the sign down, uh, this, this is supposed to have actually happened in uh, Lafayette down there, this guy that was driving an 18-wheeler truck come through and uh, pulled into one of the gas stations down there. And when he got out, he just had a blank look on his face like he didn't know where he was or what was going on. He thought he was in the twilight zone, I, I, I guess. He had uh, come by this sign and uh, didn't know exactly where he was. He knew that he had left uh, Mississippi several hours earlier and uh, was headed in and had crossed the Alabama state line. And then all at once, he runs up on this sign on the side of the road that says, Welcome to the great state of Mississippi. And anyway, he, as I said, he pulled into a uh, gas station down there, and uh, they said that his first words out of his mouth was, Where in the hell am I at? And uh, told him that he was in Lafayette, Alabama. And then he explained that he had seen the sign up there and didn't know what was going on. He, he knew he was coming, that he had just crossed over, as I said, into Alabama just a, a few hours earlier. And then uh, all at once, he runs up on his sign out, of, out in the country that says, uh, Welcome to Mississippi. And then they explain to him that they were making a movie down here. And uh, that was one of the funny little stories that happened down there while they were uh, uh, shooting the uh, movie. Then there was supposed to be another part in the movie, and I, I guess it's in there. I, I don't remember seeing it, but anyway, it's been a long time since I've watched that movie. But uh, somebody reminded me of that the other day. We were talking about it that I was fixing to do this video. And uh, there was this particular scene in the movie to where, uh, of course, they hired a lot of extras, a lot of people from the area 
down there to uh, give them a job or give them work or so at least so they could say that they were in a movie. And anyway, that's what they done to several people. And this uh, a black man, there was there was a lot of blacks from the community, a lot of whites from the community down there that was in the movie. I don't want to be prejudiced or racist and only give one race, but all races that wanted a, a part in the movie down there were down there and uh, they were working. And anyway, there was this one particular part to where they were uh, going to take this rope and put this guy on the uh, uh, back end of a truck or something down there. I, I forgot what they was going to stand him on. And I, all they were going to do is uh, sh shoot his face up close as they actually put the uh, noose around his neck where they were going to hang him. Not really. Not, weren't going to really hang him. That was just part of the movie, just a scene in the movie. I want to make that clear. And anyway, whenever the guy had been working there for like a week or so, and everything had gone good and he was having a good time, so they asked him, to get on the back end of the truck uh, the, to uh, shoot the next scene. He didn't know exactly what was going on. And these white guys uh, jumped up around him with these uh, white robes on. I won't say Ku Klux Klan because that might be racist, but that's what they were uh, uh, dressed dressed in white robes, uh, sheets, whatever you want to call it. I put it like that because we certainly don't want to say anything to offend anybody in America today. Whew, get tired of that. But anyway... Uh, when they, whenever they did this, the guy jumped off the truck and went to running, and uh, it was a little bit before they uh, caught him and everything, and the, and they explained to him what they were doing, and he knew uh -uh, he he wasn't going to stand on the back of that truck and let some white guy wearing a white sheet put a rope around his neck. No, sir. So anyway, they had to get somebody else to do it, but that was one of the little funny incidents that happened down there, or so I was told. But anyway, let's get on back now to uh, who we went to Lafayette to see, Joe Lewis. I'll try to get a little better close-up of him uh, right here uh, in front of the courthouse. The courthouse went through some remodeling here a while back and uh, they changed uh, this particular part right in here and I'll just give you a quick sweep of it real quick while we're here. Alrighty, I had to put my other eyes back on so I can read some of this off of uh, Wikipedia. Uh, that's something you might want to do is uh, Google Joe Lewis and uh, if you're really interested in him, if uh, uh, you're a big uh, boxing fan or that type of stuff. You might want to do some more research on him. But anyway, uh, Joe Lewis was born uh, just north of Lafette on May 13, 1914. Anyway, uh, he was born in a uh, ramshackle old house similar to this one that I'm going to show you. This is not the exact house, but uh, it's one very similar. Okay, now he and his family lived there for a, uh, a few years after he was born. And uh, his mother and uh, the uh, children, I think there was uh, seven uh, siblings all together, including Joe. I believe that's how many there were. They uh, moved uh, north up to uh, Chicago and then later to uh, Detroit is what I uh, read on here a few minutes ago. And uh, in uh, Detroit is where Joe began to... Uh, see that he had an interest in boxing and that type of stuff and that's where his boxing career began up in uh, uh, Detroit, Michigan. Now then, uh, he began his uh, professional boxing c career in 1934 and it spanned to 1951. He uh, reigned as the world heavyweight champion from 1937 to 1949 and he is considered one of the greatest, if not the greatest, heavyweight boxers of all time. Uh, he was nicknamed the Brown Bomber. I'm going to give you a list of some of the other names that uh, the press gave him to begin with, trying to get a good nickname for him as his uh, career began. However, before I do that, I want to give you a little other information that uh, they skip around, seems like, here on the Wikipedia. Uh, it says uh, that uh, the little ramshackle house was on Bell Chapel Road, which I believe now is County Road 78 or 87 one of the other i cannot remember the exact one but it, it would be the only one down there it'd either be 78 or 87 one of the other but there was a, a chapel down the uh this dirt road that was called bell's chapel and that's where uh he was born on this particular road uh it says he was the seventh of eight children i thought there was only eight but uh only seven but there were eight anyway when he was born he weighed 11 pounds and uh both of his parents were children of former slaves. Uh, his uh, uh, father, hold on just a second, let me get right down here. Uh, his father was predominantly African-American, 
with some white ancestry, but his mother was half Cherokee. Now, the first 12 years of his life, he spent growing up in rural Alabama in Chambers County. Throughout uh, Joe's career, he had 69 professional fights with only three losses. He tallied 52 knockouts and held the championship from 37 to 49, as I said earlier. And that was the longest span of any heavyweight uh, title holder uh, to date. Okay, now, uh, when uh, Joe Lewis began his uh, climb up the ladder and uh, was winning all these uh, fights and everything, the press, uh, let, let me see how they've got it worded, America's press began promoting Lewis' image in the context contents of the era's racism. The nicknames they created included the Mahogany Mauler, the Chocolate Chopper, Coffee-Colored K.O. King, and Safari Sandman. But then the one that stuck, the last one, was the Brown Bomber. Over his life, there were uh, many uh, places named in his honor. One of them was the Joe Louis Arena. There's a golf course in uh, Chicago that's named in his honor and a park in Louisiana. That's named the Joe Louis Park. Then on uh, April the 12th, 1981, at the age of 66, Joe suffered a cardiac arrest and died. So I guess you could say that Joe Lewis lived the American dream. He came from a, a poor sharecropping family in the rural Alabama and uh, went to the top of his chosen profession and uh, stayed there when he got there. That was the thing about it. Uh, as I said earlier, he only lost three title bouts in his entire career. So Joe Lewis was a, uh, a, another great American, another great Alabamian, and we're proud that he came from uh, Chambers County, Alabama. So now, I guess I better bring this video on to a close. We had a pretty good day in the Fed after all, even though it was foggy and rainy and just a rough day to be outside. I hope you enjoyed this Alabama adventure. And as uh, I like to say now, I sort of copy these words from another great Alabamian who was uh, a very good country music songwriter and singer, performer, Hank Williams. Good Lord willing and the creeks don't rise, I'll be looking for you somewhere on down the trail.